Hello and welcome. For China Solved, I'm Andrew Hubert, and this is the China Negotiator. So you're a strategic competitor. Episode seven. This means war. Trade war in three charts. There's a war on now. You may not want to be in a war, but you are in one. If you're involved in U.S.-China trade or in Western China trade, you might not feel particularly excited by the U.S.-China trade dispute. But in China, this is big news, and this is moving towards the whole modern barbarian invasion that parents used to scare their children with around bedtime. The century of humiliation is back, and this time it's being live tweeted. And the Chinese are、uh, definitely feeling this one more than you are. Tariffs and bans—they are the stones in the pond. Even if you don't feel their direct impact, the ripples are going to hit you. The big gap to watch is the willingness to fight. And on the Chinese side, they are pretty willing to have a fight that they feel is, that they've been told was inevitable, that was destiny. Whereas in the U.S., it's a mixed picture at best. So that means if you, as a frontline negotiator, have to readjust your entire China approach, you may see yourself as that cool dude who really does get China, but you'll still be seen as the bloodthirsty white devil by. At least some people, some of the time, and some people you know in China, some people you are friends with. So there's a war on now. Three charts, and be looking, of course, at my old friend, the Hofstadter index, the six dimensions that Hofstadter uses. And there is the link up top, and there you can see China and the United States displayed for all the, their cultural glory right next to one another. We're going to be focusing on three of those charts today: individualism versus collectivism, power distance index, and LTO, long-term orientation. And I go into more details on this on an earlier post that I will link to, I think. Okay, so first let's start off by talking about the individualism index. Are you collectivist or are you individualist? Well, China registers very, very low in terms of individualist, which makes them a collectivist society. This compares to the United States, who is one of the most individualist of the countries ranked. So China is going to see this as very much an us versus them type deal, whereas in the United States you've got sort of mixed signals. At one point last week, Trump was saying that it's not a trade war; it's just a little squabble. In China, you are already seeing,、um, you know, quote unquote, spontaneous street level displays of patriotism, which is going to be expressed as anti foreign sentiment in some cases. So the us versus them dilemma is worsened by the next chart I want to look at, which is the power distance index or the PDI. And PDI asks the question or answers the questions: How okay is it with this society that power and wealth and privilege are distributed unequally? And China is pretty okay with that. China has a high score for power distance. The United States is low to middling. And one of the ways this manifests is that Chinese people like their power structures、uh, formal and respectful and predictable. That that's part of their deal.、Uh, high power distance means that society thinks it's okay for power and wealth to be distributed unequally, but they expect their leaders to behave a certain way. So they're not so big on the tweeting and the name calling. And finally, let's look at long-term orientation, which is another big difference. This does not mean patience. That's the next one, indulgence, which we'll look at next time or another time. Long-term orientation talks about how you manage, how how a culture manages progress versus tradition. So when we look at LTO, we are、uh, measuring the tension between pragmatic societies and normative societies. If you have a high score like China here, you are described as pragmatic. Pragmatic people prepare for the future, and in China that means education in the long run. But it also means that they have probably been preparing for this kind of fight for a while. A low score is normative. You you have a view in your mind of how the future should look, and it should look a lot like your traditional background. Things should be a certain way, and if that means you have to fight the future, then that's what you're going to do. 
Final word, the trade war is going to get worse in waves. And you'll be able to measure anti-U.S. and anti-foreign sentiment by the riots that will pop up very spontaneously, but will be extremely well organized and everyone will show up with all their equipment and accoutrement and then will break up very peacefully after they've destroyed some foreign products. Your relationships in China are going to be impacted. Maybe in a good way. Maybe this will help bring you and your partners closer together. But probably not. You are probably the bad guy in the Chinese version of this story. So it's time to reassess your plan B. Uh, present day China manufacturing is probably not going to be part of your plan B. So you either need a new model for approaching China or you need to look elsewhere and maybe have a plan B that doesn't include China at all. Thanks very much for China Solved. I'm Andrew Hubert. I will speak to you again soon.